Hey everybody, it's time for a thought of the day video. Why? Because it's a new year? Because we just got done with the Kingdom series? Man, that was a that was a ride. Was it 42 videos? Um, almost two years, just under two years worth of uh, time in that series. And so we're, we find ourselves in between series. So I'm, I'm probably going to do a handful of these thought of the day videos, not in a row, but just over the next... I don't know, six months, nine months, I'll probably do a handful of Thought of the Day videos. And um, uh, I, I got this, somebody gave me on my sabbatical, or I think it was on book tour right before my sabbatical, actually. It was great timing. One of our listeners gave me these, um, I don't even know what to call them. They're, it's by Strahan Coleman, who I had never heard of before. Strahan Coleman. Um, this is Prayer Volume 2. So he had prayer volume one, two, and three, um, just little poems. Uh, supposedly he's a, a musician, an artist, or a former musician, because he, he got sick. He wrote a book called Beholding that I've recommended in some other platforms and venues. I'll put a link to that book. Um, I'll put a link to this little book um, as well in the description of the video, but just these little poems. Um, these are probably going to be short. I, I might do like a couple in each video. Because if not, it'll almost be like a short. It'll be like four or five minutes long. Because um, I don't want to give a whole lot of commentary to it or talk about it. But just a lot of these little poems that just I really loved. The thoughts that they provoked. And just wanted to share some of those. And and if you if you really love this stuff, you can get your own copies of Strahan's work. Um but, uh, yeah, here, here's the first one. Here's a poem. Uh, this is on page 57 of volume two. Uh, I think I'd call them poems. He may, he may call them something else, but um, here, here's the little stanza. It says this. May you find the courage to give your broken things to the God who makes monuments from ashes fires from embers, and rivers of life from the mourner's tears. May you find the courage to give your broken things to the God who makes monuments from ashes, fires from embers, and rivers of life from the mourner's tears. I love the first phrase. May you find the courage to give your broken things to God. That was the line that stuck with me. The courage to give your broken things to God. I loved that phrase. At the end of every one of these poems, so he has the poem, but then he has some, some commentary footnotes. And he says this. He said, he's the one, speaking of God, he's the one who plunders the shadows, trauma, and pride that are hidden within us. He's the counselor who robs the graves of our guilty conscience inspiring confession, erasing our shame. He's the joyful robber of all things dark and deathly, the captor of the free falling, the lover of the lonely. He never acts begrudgingly or by imposition. He waits poised with pleasure to pounce on our failures and insecurities and to show them kindness. God walked out of his tomb to gain the right to plunder ours. He's waiting to walk into your tomb today and draw forth the treasure that waits there, that we would have the courage to give our broken things to God. If I add commentary to that, I'm just going to ruin it. So I'll just let those words speak. I'll let his words speak as he's written them. May you find the courage to give your broken things to the God who makes monuments from ashes, fires from embers, and rivers of life from mourners' tears. It does take courage to take our brokenness and give that to God, believing he can do something with it. We usually want to ignore our brokenness, hide our brokenness. The last thing we'd want to do is acknowledge its presence and give it away. We usually do everything but those things. I said I wasn't going to add commentary. I'll give you one more. I'll give you one more. This is from page 60. 
page 60, when you're not speaking to me, you're saying in your loudest way to rest. When you're not speaking to me, you're saying in your loudest way to rest. His commentary, his commentary says this, I've often found that the silence of God can be a gentle reminder that I need rest more deeply than I know. Even engagement with God can become work when it begins to feel mandatory or necessary. Every now and then, I experience a season where silence and rest become an answer in themselves. In these moments, rest can become a transformative passivity that brings about what in life or in God I was looking for in the first place. Sometimes when we don't hear God, he's trying to tell us in the loudest of ways that we need rest. And I loved his commentary about the silence of God. One of my favorite songs is a song by Andrew Peterson. I'll try to find a link and put it in my description to that as well. There's a song by Andrew Peterson called The Silence of God. And uh, it's meant a lot to me. I usually have it on my Christmas playlist, actually, um, and other playlists as well. It's not necessarily a Christmas song, but I love to think of it in the context of Advent, which obviously just happened. So timing's a little off there, but that song has done a lot of work in my heart and in my life. So um, Andrew Peterson's one of my favorite, favorite artists, um, favorite musicians. And so I'll put that in there too. Anyway, um, not a whole lot of profound stuff from me. I just wanted to share some things from others. A couple big ideas that we would find the courage to share our brokenness with the God who transforms all things and that we might consider that when we see and find the silence or what seems like absence of God, sometimes he's inviting us just to join him in rest. So I hope those things are helpful. Um, may it be a productive thought of the day. And if not, we'll just see you in the next video. Uh, our next series, by the way, I'm going to do. I'm going to start doing a series on soteriology, the theology of salvation. Um, don't get too excited. I'm not going to answer all the questions that everybody always asks me. I'm going to try to reframe those questions, as I always do. That's my thing, right? Um, I love to try to reframe the conversation. Because often I think we're asking the wrong questions or pointing the conversation in the wrong way. So if we can reframe that conversation and if we can um, ask a different set of questions, maybe it leads us to something more productive and more helpful. Um, so I'm going to do, I think, five videos maybe. I'm going to do a five video series on soteriology. So we're going to start working on that. And we'll do that through, uh, I don't know, uh, February, March. January, February, March, somewhere in there. Um, and we'll be posting those videos. So that's coming. That's coming next. Don't get too excited. We're not going to get crazy provocative. Um, we are going to probably be a little uncomfortable. That's okay. And uh, and we'll go from there. So that's what's coming next, okay? Um, I get endless emails about soteriology. I get endless emails about heaven and hell and what happens when we die and how am I saved? And okay, but uh, am I going to go to hell for blah, like the, 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 they fill my inbox? And so, um, so I'd love to do a series about that and get us to rethink those things. So, those are the things I'm thinking. Uh, hope you're having a great beginning of your new year. May 2024 be good to us all, and uh, may we try to run after God with everything we got. Okay, everybody. All right, we'll talk to you in the next video. See you then.